Jamboard is a whiteboarding tool for either synchronous or asynchronous learning. So it's a great tool to use while you're in a Google Meet or a Zoom. If you're in the classroom, it's a great way to get students in, uh, engaged and to also kind of do a check for understanding. And it's easy to use in terms of drag and drop, um, collaborative, and then read and respond. And so I have the age old question of what's better, pepperoni or sausage. Um, so go ahead and grab a sticky. Um, if you are on a laptop or a desktop device, your stickies are going to look like this. Um, however, if you're joining the jam from an iPad or um, a, a tablet device, it'll look a little bit different. So your toolbar will actually have a plus sign down here at the bottom instead. You'll grab a sticky note from that plus or from right here and make your decision. I am an avid sausage girl. And it has to be actually like Italian. So, so you'll grab a sticky and uh, make your vote. Put it there. So I've got about 19 people. And as you can see, what's great about Jamboard is you can automatically see who's coming in. If you, um, this is a public Jamboard because I don't know where everybody is tuning in from, but you can also make a Jamboard that is just uh, specific to your school or your district. And then you can require um, that you can like change the settings in the back end here where I can change it to only the people in my domain will be able to have access to it. I think I'm on page two, but there we go. Love it. Oh, we got mushrooms. Absolutely. Sausage people, you're in my tribe. And so this is like a really great, really quick way to get students engaged collaboratively um, to see exactly where their thinking is and what you need to potentially reteach. Um, Awesome. You guys got it. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to show you a couple tools inside of Jamboard, which are fantastic. If for any reason you needed to rename, um, you can always rename a Jamboard. You can always download a Jamboard as a PDF. You can save it as a JPEG. Uh, if for any reason you needed to clear the frame, so if I wanted to wipe out all of this so I can use it in my next class or my next training, I could by clearing the entire frame. Love this little smiley face here. Um, we're gonna go through some of the tools over here on the left-hand side. Of course, there's always a pen tool that you can use. If I click the little tiny arrow right next to that pen tool, there's a bunch of other um, that have a highlighter, I have a brush, you can change the color as well. You can always use the eraser. There's a selection tool. Again, we use the stickies just now. If I wanted to, I could also uh, search an image by Google. And I can you know, look for pizza, right? I can grab a slice like that. And then I can insert that too as my vote, if you will. So there's ways to play around with images too. And then of course you've got circles arrows, um, there's also text boxes, and then of course that little laser if you wanna highlight a particular person. So what's kind of cool about Jamboard is that you can, I believe right now it's up to 25 people can be in a jam. So if you didn't get in there first, um, unfortunately you didn't get to practice on my jam, but uh, about 25 people. So just enough for a, a traditional size classroom. And then you can have multiple pages. So you just hit the arrow up here at the top and that gives you uh, an additional page in your jam. If you wanna see all of the jams that are in a particular jam board, you click on the center there, you'll see, I can actually see all five pages now. Um, you can also duplicate. So if I wanna make sure I have that pizza background, I can duplicate that. And one of the newest features that they actually added was the ability to, um, actually do or do a set background. So I'm actually gonna go to a clear one here. And on the set background, you can also choose like dots. There's the lined paper, uh, grid. And then what I did to make sure that nobody would uh, take away my two pizzas and the directions is I actually, um, a little trick that I do is I'll create the jam. So I'll just recreate it here. So I grab those two pieces of uh, 
two images of pizza. So I think I had a sausage and a pepperoni. There we go. So there was one of them. I'm gonna go back in and grab the other one, which is my sausage. There you go. And I think I like that image the best, right? So there's my sausage, my pepperoni. And then in the center, I had put my instructions. It's just a really quick way to make like a background that uh, students won't tamper with. So you'll put your instructions in the center using a sticky. And then what I do as a trick, I actually take a screenshot of this jam like that. I'll clear the frame and then I go to set background and I upload that picture um, as my background. And that way it makes sure to stay and students don't disturb the images or the background quick little hack. But of course, you can bring in any type of background. Um, I often use jams for storyboarding or T-charts, then diagrams. So I'll put the background in there and then students can kind of have at it. All right, I'm going to go back out just for a second here. Um, a couple of Jamboard desktop tips. Um, Control D will always duplicate. Um, always, I love using emojis, so um, use emojis if you can. Students love them as well. Um, and then over here, it's just all of the descriptions of what those tools on the side do. Again, you can download it as a PDF, and then you can always save it as an image as well. And then the, this tip is kind of cool. Use the transparent stickies to put text on top of images. So for instance, if I wanted to go over to stickies, this last one on the end is transparent. And then I can put, you know, uh, do not touch this. Save that. And then that's transparent. So you can always see the image that's behind it. Uh, it is not possible to disable this laser tool. Unfortunately, I know kids love it, but luckily it disappears after a second, but it is a little bit distracting. I totally agree. Um, for the Jamboard app, it looks different. So just to kind of show you again, pen tools or um, desktop tools look like this. If you're on an app um, on the like a tablet or even on your phone, um, it'll look like very similar. So it'll still have these tools. There won't be a laser. And instead, actually there is a laser, but instead of um, the fifth button down here is gonna be a plus sign, which actually gives you more. You get the sticky notes, you still get the images. You can actually pull in drive content. You can take a photograph, which is kind of cool. Um, there is an image library that'll bring in like all the stuff from Google search. And then they actually have these things called stickers that are really cute. So there's like um, a talking bubble. There's uh, actually Venn diagrams in there as well. So I actually prefer using the iPad app version to the desktop, but use whatever you can when you can. So my next favorite tool is something called Whiteboard FI. So if you were a fan of Jamboard and its collaborative abilities, but you want a tool that's also free because free is my like favorite Thing, and it's my middle name, but you want a tool that actually assesses students individually, Whiteboard FI is going to be your friend. So um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new class. And tool to keep students engaged. Um, I'm going to, so even though it's free, they have some great resources and tools. So for instance, you can actually enable a waiting room just like you do with Zoom. And then you can actually enable manual save mode for students. So sometimes um, if the Wi-Fi or the functionality or there's limited bandwidth, the save mode is kind of nice because it at least pick students up exactly where they left off. So you can enable these two tools if you like. I'm gonna go ahead and click on create new class. And I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna drop this in our chat. And I want you guys to head there and I will let you enroll in my whiteboard.
Okay, and as you can see, as you guys are coming in, in real time, I'm able to see who is in my classroom. Okay. There's probably gonna be hundreds of you. <laughs> so you guys are gonna come on in. And then up here at the top, there's a, a tool here and you see it says toggle my whiteboard. So I'm gonna to toggle it on. And what this is going to give me the ability to do is look at my teacher whiteboard. So let's say um, I want to practice sim multiplication with my kiddos. Now I have my four times four and I could just tell you, hey, um, it's four times four, uh, work on it on your whiteboards. But let's say I'm working with students who um, are, you know, elementary level, or I just want to push this out to all of them at one time. So what I can do instead of verbally telling them to do this on their whiteboard up here at the top right hand corner, there's this button that says push. When I click on it, it's going to tell me, it's going to ask me, do you want me to push to students all of the pages? Because you can have additional pages, not just this one board. Um, is it pushing just the current page to student? Or is it push Is it push it as a background, kind of like Jamboard did as a background? So you can decide um, how you want to push it out to students. If you want to make sure that they're not erasing what you actually push out to them, I always suggest this one on the bottom. But if you don't mind it, you can always push the one on the top or the one in the middle. So I'm going to push this as a background to your whiteboard. It takes a second, but you'll see now that I have now pushed out that question um, to your students. And I see the question from Rochelle. I don't think that there is actually is a limit. If there is, I haven't I haven't hit it. Um, there might be, but I have never hit it before. And then I'll have you guys go ahead and respond. I should be able to see exactly there it is. They're popping up now. Mm -hmm. Good. And so now in real time, I'm actually able to see whether I'm in the classroom, whether I'm hybrid, whether I'm um, remote, I can see in real time what students are actually doing um, on their, and <laughs> thanks Danny for the smiley face, um, what they're actually doing. And so let's say I may have a, a student who I want to talk to about their particular answer. I'm just gonna pick on you, Lee. So I can click on Lee's, right? And I can say, hmm, okay, I wanna look at this because four times four is definitely not A, but we can talk about the thinking and, and the difference between times and the difference between plus, right? And so I can give him a quick reaction. I would probably never just do a thumbs down for a student, but I can give a quick reaction here and heart it, like it, right? Um, I could also click on this actions button. I can erase this whiteboard and say, I want you to try again. Um, I could also um, push a particular student's response to all students on the whiteboard. Um, I would do this in the case of saying something like, hey, um, let's take a look at this particular whiteboard and it could be a learning moment and say, well, what did this student, so I'm not gonna name it, but what, what did this student do, um, could have done differently or, or how can we correct this response, right? And I can push this response to all the students and then have them work through or do a written response as or extended response about how they can correct this error, right? Um, and then over here, I can uh, write a comment Right. This is a premium subscription. Don't have it. But if you wanted to get, I think actually whiteboard is really economical, but you can also do something like writing a comment if you had the premium subscription um, as well. So I love that um, you have the ability to, I'm going to erase this. Um, you have the ability to really give interactive feedback. Love that, uh, Katya. Um, while actually looking at all of your students at the same time. Up here at the top, you'll see that you've got, I've got, as a teacher, I have a plethora of tools and so do you as a, as a student. So I've got shapes, I got uh, text, I've got music notes, right? I've got all of these things at my disposal. Um, I can clear all this stuff off, but I want none of it. So I'm gonna clear everything and start again. Um, what's fantastic, because this is not, you know, integrated into any LMS. So how do I get the stuff from here out of here? Um, up here at the top right, you'll see this little crank. Um, there's a couple things you, you can do. The biggest one is that you can save all of the whiteboards as a PDF. What I also love, if you are, have diverse learners, teachers um, who co-teach with you, you can add them as a co-teacher. 
you can clear all of the student whiteboards at one time. Um, I always, before I'm sharing my screen, will hide student names. Um, and then you can also um, lock the room. So when you know all of your students have come uh, and you wanna lock it down, because sometimes students will share that code uh, with people who should not have it, and you don't want anything to pop up on one of those whiteboards that's inappropriate, you can always lock the room as well. And then last but not least, you can close the room. Because this is the free version of Whiteboard FI, you do have a two hour limit um, while, you're, while the whiteboards are active. So once I close and log out or leave this platform, I have two hours while that code or that link is active um, to like download or do all the things. Otherwise it completely wipes it and it's gone. Uh, but for something that's free for that two hours, it works or while you're using it and then two hours after that, it's fantastic. And of course you can always upgrade to a premium version of it if you really do like it.